you had LeBron James as a rookie. Talk about that time. Um, the first time I ever played with him, I, I knew he was different. <laughs> like, I was on um, Portland. We played him, and then I got traded like two weeks later. So I had seen him play. We played against him, and then I got traded two weeks later. But the, the day we played him, he had had like 32. So we were all in Portland talking about him, talking about him, and then I got traded. He was a special man. Like, his work ethic, the way he lifted weights and the way he played and practice and work. I was like, this dude, this good, and he working this hard. I got to step my shit up. So mm-hmm. just being around him, he made me work hard and made me better. Well, I knew he was the real thing when he came in. Um, you it did? Was just, it was just a matter of time to when he was going to pick up and when he was going to actually learn the game. He was still young, but... Was he uh, confident? He was confident. He was still a little nervous, still kind of feeling his way. Um, but, you know, he had a lot of hype to live up to. Um, and it, it was tough to live up to that hype. Then the TV games is televised. I'm like, okay, he's making those strides, and he is the talk of the town. Scott Williams, who played with Michael Jordan, was like, I asked him, I said, yo, is he better than Michael Jordan? Uh, right, like, right now at this age? Or like, I mean, like a 23-year-old Michael Jordan, like a 24-year-old Michael Jordan? He's like, yes. I said, how about like a 25, 26 Michael Jordan? He's like, yes. I was like, how about like a 28, 29? <laughs> and he's like, you know what? He still got some more time for that. <laughs> LeBron James, who was my teammate my final year in Cleveland in 2005. And me, and me being his teammate and being able to get the information from Scott Williams, who won two championships with Mike, you could kind of start seeing like, yo, he is different. But we, had, we were just fortunate enough to see it every day where we got used to it. The outside world wasn't used to it. And I think he has handled himself uh, extremely well as the face of the NBA, and I couldn't be more proud of the uh, player and the man that he is. You you had to know Brown was gonna be great, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not only with the the guy given ability, like mm-hmm. the talent, like his physical, like how he w- looks when he walks in the room. Yeah. But like his brain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His brain. Like early on, we would. I can remember taking flights and trips and everything, and he would go and talk to everybody on the team. But he wants to know what it takes to make this guy successful. Yeah. And eighth man, and seventh man, and so on. And I just knew he'd be, you know, be successful from that, just using his brain, man, because you know the NBA, that, it's, it's physical, but if you can't think, like, you you won't last. So I, w- I would do this thing with players, like the younger person I was in Cleveland, and we would go to the each arena, and we would have to, I would be like, okay, name, three or four of those retired jerseys up top. Mm. And LeBron could always do it. He could always do it. So I wouldn't even be talking to him most times. And then he would come and say, oh, that's such and such, you know, because that's just who he was. And just watching him, you know what I'm saying? Just, you can watch the highlights today and just see how locked in he is. Yeah, like like mm-hmm. he walking past people, he don't even know who it is. Like right. he, just, he just walking to the, to, the, to the sideline to sit down and wait for the timeout to be over so he can go back out and get back to work. We used to always say it like, like he got a chance. And, and what that meant was like, he got a chance to be one of the best, if not the best to ever play. Like we, we were saying it at a young age, like he got a chance, young fella got a chance. And we all knew what that meant because it was like, yo, this, this is different. Right. <laughs> no, this is different, right. this is special. I actually sat next to him like five seasons, right next to his locker, was my locker. And I used to ask him, like, uh, how you don't feel pressure? How you, how you get 30 every night? And we all know that all the teams are trying to stop you from, from getting 30. And he's like, pressure, I don't feel pressure. Like, he, when you say that word, like, he, 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 it don't exist to him. There's no pressure. There's no pressure at all. I've been getting pressure since I was 10 years old. Like, he, he's so tough mentally, that's amazing, amazing. He's prime example of, of great basketball player off the court and on the court. That, it's amazing. LeBron was an outstanding teammate. He was an outstanding father, outstanding friend, outstanding teammate. Absolutely loved my time with him in Cleveland. Um, he brought out the best in me, especially at that point in my career when I was kind of on the downturn dealing with injuries, couldn't play a lot of minutes, but I had a great role as a three-point shooter and a stretch four man. Um, and we had a great season winning 66 games. So uh, LeBron is, is a joy to be with as a person off the floor, as his teammate, and also obviously on the floor, he makes everyone better. He's a big-ass kid, though. He has a lot of fun with it. You would never know that yeah. by seeing him operate. Mm-hmm. The clip of me and LeBron on the line, it was like in the middle of the game, which was stupid. I didn't realize what was going on. And it was kind of disrespectful to the other team. 
yeah, but yeah it's, a, it's a reel that, that comes around every once in a while and uh, i learned the hard way as a rook front office is like you can't do what the vets do you can't be on the sideline dancing and stuff like that did lebron ask you to dance with him in that clip it's a so i was the only rookie there and it wasn't like a question of anything like they didn't ask me anything they would tell me to do a lot of things <laughs> And um, you know, was dancing on the sideline, they had we did the the pictures before. You know, Brian used to do little birthday pictures or whatever the camera, and they would pose pregame. Um, and part of it was during the uh, halftime or timeout or something. The music was going, and he was dancing. And of course, they know I used to do that shit, so they're like, "Yo, rookie, you better get out there, get your shit going." Like, so it wasn't really much of a question. It was like, "Rook, get your ass up there and start doing doing what the what you do." Um, so that's just how he operates. Um, and every night, he's he's ma his magnifying glass is the biggest one in the world. In the world, I try to give his guys as much flowers as I can, but there's there's not there's not enough flowers in the world to give what he's mm -hmm. accomplished. I had the opportunity to play with him for two years, and it's, it's just when it was the first time in my career where I didn't have to lead. I saw a young kid that was a, a great leader. He was a great leader. He did everything the right way. Played the game the right way. I wish I could have got there two or three years earlier. He was better in practice than I thought he was in the games. What? When I saw him in practice, it was a separator for me of good to great to goats. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do the things that he did and how he did. And so... So we take it for granted? Of course. Of course we do. I've watched this guy and I, I see him take care of his body. I see him own it 100%. But I've also know that guys can roll their ankle and be out four weeks. I've seen this guy roll his ankle and come back and give you about 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm talking about a bad roll ankle, and I'm like, oh, he done. He come right back. I'm out four weeks with this roll ankle. He come right back, fourth <laughs> right. quarter, scored 20. Right. It's the, it was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. We all have our dreams of how things are going to go and how your career is going to be played out. And I mean, to actually watch him do it, I think one, we're not gonna appreciate it until um, until he's done playing, um, and it's gonna be a dangerous new norm for any other player who wants to be the goat. He he was able to go from like I said before that point where you don't know how to get it done and then you do. That second year, yeah, I think he was he was on another planet. Yeah, it became he he, he was he was very very motivated to be successful that time. We could put him off the ball, have him working off of cuts. And now it's all about sustaining. And I mean, you know, you look at his production, you look at his physique, <laughs> his body, and just the way he's going out there and competing every night, it's not stopping. Playing with him is, it's, it's an unbelievable experience. I mean, he's, first of all, he's good as a teammate as he is about, as a player. And uh, he lifts everybody in that locker room. So like, you know, having that opportunity to play with him, most importantly, put me it was able to put me on a stage that I always wanted to be on. I wanted to see if I'd puke on the big stage or if I'd make shots. Right. And so, you know, every every kid on the playground or when they're in the gym is thinking about playing on that stage in the NBA Finals, and he allowed me to, to live that out along with D. Wade and Chris Bosh and Ray Allen and UD. So, just an unbelievable experience. But ultimate dude, man, he's he's the best. I seen this man work on a move, one day in practice for ten minutes, and the man used a damn move. I guess the Knicks in like the first or second round, I couldn't remember. The man used the damn move against the Knicks about 10 times like he had been doing it his whole life. And it was boom, every time he scored. It was coming across the lane, going to his left, coming off his right foot, shooting that jumper. Yeah. Man, the man worked on him for 10 minutes and the man told the people ass up with the same move against the Knicks in the first round. Man, ain't nobody stopping that man. See? Now, at the end of the day, you, you can sit there and be like, okay, I can try to main like contain right, right. or whatever you want to try to do, but you ain't going to stop him. Yeah. You know That's what I'm saying? If he crazy. choose to go for it, he going to go for it. But That's yes, crazy. he is a very unselfish basketball player. Right. He's right. a very intelligent basketball player. Yes. Can't be a person that doesn't have, be able to approach the game mentally. You know what I'm saying? He don't, he don't go for that. That drive Bron crazy. You don't know the game. You can't keep up with him mentally. That's it. It was times where Bron would come in and we'll be going down the court and he'll say, don't worry about that. Don't look over there. Just look at me. Don't look at Spo. There was no disrespect to Spo, but we out here. I got it. Just look, follow me. He would guard Derrick Rose some nights, Tony Parker some nights, and then other nights, Kobe Bryant and Kevin Durant. <laughs> and then on other nights, you know, Kevin Garnett, you know, so.
You know, he he that's crazy. LeBron, <laughs> yeah, yeah, LeBron. <laughs> yeah. Man, I was like, you like you know that like when you when you hear it out loud, it's like damn Tony Parker one night and Kevin Garnett like it's but imagine imagine yeah. Cole was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, saw I know right, right, right. Yeah. he was there watching it up close. It. Yeah, I saw him had to go, you know. I remember we was playing the Celtics and sometimes Ray John Rondo would give us fits. And so we would go to a bigger lineup and we would put LeBron on Ray John Rondo. You know, in the fourth quarter, we'd be like, all right, it's Kevin Garnett. <laughs> that same game when he was going Rondo, sometimes he got to guard, you know, Kevin Garnett. And then you got, you know, who we played. When we played uh, the Spurs, sometimes he would, you know, had to guard, you know, Tim Duncan sometime down there. So, <laughs> you know, he... <laughs> You know, he's one of the guys that, you know, he's one of the few guys that can, you know, in his prime that can guard, you know, multiple positions at a high level. Because a lot of guys can, like, quote unquote, guard. But when you start talking about guarding at elite level, LeBron in his prime, he was definitely one of those dudes. How old were you when LeBron came back? 22, 23? 22, 23. With what you know now at 30, do you do anything differently during that period? We can sit here for hours. <laughs> we can sit here for hours going through the details, combing through it, but I think the, the greatest thing I would tell the youth is superheroes need help. You yep. know, the, the leader of the team doesn't always have to take on the burden. And Bron took on crazy burdens. He still amazes me. You know, every time he does something amazing, you know, he's always compared to someone else or, you know, other performances. You know, he does unbelievable things. I'm watching Bron, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This is what, this is how we win. So my mentality completely changed. I was so insecure of my game, I didn't really want people to see. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want them to see the insecurities that I had of me missing shots. We and, all have and, them. You know what I'm saying? We all have them within yeah. our game because that's our craft. We love it so much that that's, you know what I mean? That's what it is. And he helped me, I'm like, bro, it's a reason why you're here. It's a reason, this is why we're here. So we, when we get to those moments, we'll miss those shots. We do, you know what I mean? And he, and, he pounded that shit into my head so much. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. And um, I just think it, it, it puts him at ease when he's able just to know, hey, when I'm open or sometimes when guys are even not close enough, just, just let it go. He's the only one on the team that has the ultra green light. That's my man. Like, his work ethic and his drive changed my life, I think. It, it was something that I've never seen before. Like, literally, and I, I catered a lot of that to Brown because his, his work ethic and his drive is ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you're the 15th man on the team or the second man on the team. He'll go work out with you. He's going to get shots up with you. He's going to talk to you, communicate with you, like what's going on, what, 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 what do you see, whatever. And for me, once I really got around that winning mindset, like, no, this is our expectations. We expect to win. All I got to do is play defense and spot up. Easy. Bron doesn't go it. Like, he doesn't see the game how you see it. And it's like, is literally what makes him special. Ron knows every scheme, knows every coach, know where everybody's supposed to be, know the other teams, coaches, playbook, style of coaching, how his ball club's gonna play. Knows every player, he knows players in college. You know what I'm saying? Like when we talking about shit like this, his mindset of how X's and O's work is it, special. And when you're like playing with him, it's cool because most people with LeBron's skill set and his mind, either they can't communicate it to you or they ain't fin to because they don't want you to be nothing like them. They're like, this is why I'm me and you stay over there and be you. He has to share basketball knowledge with people. Like he's, it's, it might be his biggest superpower, his ability to get everybody on the same page. Bron is like, all right, you can't do it this way, I can show you this way. He can just, ex he can explain this game forward and back. All right, think about it like this. Like he would do stuff like being a game and I, it was, he, he the first player I ever played with where it's like, hey G, um, we finna go in here, uh, buddy ass, he, he shading over here, like he shading on me G, like I'm not open. He like, no, you gonna be open. He don't mean to do it, but he'll be like, like JR, hand. Like he'll just throw it to the hand. Snatch it, palm it. He'll like be in a post up and he'll be like, no, 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 Shump, don't stay right there, don't move. Shump, if he move, if he move, cut. Cut right behind him if he move. <laughs> and he'll start his dribble. Don't move. Now Tristan, you dive. Tristan, cut, cut, take it with you. 
if he do, if he tags you, I'ma throw this right to Sean. Like he'll say it. And everything he's saying, you just watch it happen. It happens. If that man don't tag, he gonna dunk it. If that man tags, he gonna shoot a three. Which one you want for a timeout? And the moment that man flinch, I'll sprint behind it, catch, dunk. Now, if a man could do that with his back turned, sitting right here with the ball palm, talking to the crowd, doing all the like the man, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, that's a different type of scary for me. I think what makes LeBron successful is his brain. In some, some ways he's chasing ghosts, in some ways he's creating barriers that he wants to not only break through, but explode through. So his, his oh, he says strive for greatness. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, uh, you know, in the way he takes care of his body, um, you know, what he does when he's in practice, the tone he sets, uh, always trying to get better. I mean, he never stops. You know, he obviously expects a lot from you. I think the greatest players in the world do. Uh, or the greatest players ever do. And that was something he, he, he knew that I was going to have to sacrifice. I didn't know how, what that meant when I got to Cleveland, but it was the best thing and best move that you know, I ever made was to be a part of something special in a winning team like that and to be a part of uh, that team with LeBron as well. And I'll always, always, always have his back. The Laker era has begun in L.A. Forward 6'8 from St. Vincent, St. Mary, Ohio, number 23, LeBron James. LeBron come in. It's a whole different mindset sure. change. I mean, you can just tell, obviously, LeBron in the, in the gym, it's just a different feel, you know, just off the bat. But um, way more attention to detail. Like, our practices were way different. Um, it was just literally night and day, man, night and day. Uh, he's, he's definitely a, a tough a force to, uh, to get a stop with. One guy can't stop LeBron. He makes his teammates better. And this crazy thing, we were in a bubble. This goes back to the bubble. Me and Brown were in the bubble watching the game. I think it was it was Miami and Boston again. And uh, we were sitting in the room watching the game. And like I said, it went down to the wire. So Brown's like, if we if we get Miami, I got Spo. And if we get Boston, you got Brad. So that was kind of our mindset. It's like, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to beat the Heat or we're going to beat the Celtics. It was more so. If we can outcoach, or you know, if we can outcoach or outplay the coaches on that staff in particular, which two guys we felt that we knew pretty good, we were going to win. I mean, that's kind of that's how they kind of unfolded. LeBron, he put in the work. He's always working. He always has Mike with him. He's always, you know, doing whatever he needs to do to stay right. So, I'm not surprised at all. He just got the whole package. He can pass. He post up. He's big. He's like Magic Johnson on steroids. We know what you're going to get out of LeBron. LeBron's like Captain America. <laughs> For real, real <laughs> you know, shit. That's like, that's, uh -huh. like, that's like LeBron. So LeBron is always, he want everybody to be around. You know what I'm saying? He want to have fun. He want to dance before the game. He, he jokes around a lot. He's always laughing, dancing, you know, just doing funny shit. And, um, you know, I think that's the cool part for sure. He's like. <laughs> He's a little kid, man. Like he's like you, you would think that like, but he is like a, like a grown man, and he's like this like alpha, and he's like this like super serious person. But like, like he's like an eighteen year old too at the same time. You know what I mean? And I just feel like that's the best part about him because like you understand like that like we hold like celebrities and we hold people of, of figures to a pedestal, but like in all reality, everyone is mm -hmm. the same person. You know what I mean? He he acts like a damn kid. He acts like he's like 18. Uh, you know, I never really see him in a bad mood. Uh, always joking, laughing, uh, you know, having a good time. And for someone that, you know, you put on a pedestal because uh, he's done what he's done, um, for him to just be so personable. Right, like, right, yeah. you, you could talk to him about anything. Uh, you can have good conversations with him. You could joke around, like I said. And, um, you know, it's, like I said, his best, the best thing about him is he comes to work every day happy. How do you expect he will approach season 21 compared to the first 20 seasons? Um, the same. I mean, he puts in a lot of work. Um, like you say, he takes his nutrition very seriously, he takes his body very seriously, his, his work uh, ethic is unmatched. And, um, you know, obviously as you get older, um, your body starts to wear down, so he's in overdrive now on however many games he's, he's going to play, he's going to be ready. Um, but knowing the competitor that he is, I know he's going to you know, play all 82 and um, do everything he can to help the team win.